distinguished foreign minister, consuls general, your excellencies, and friends. Good afternoon and welcome to the University of Chicago for this year's King Abdullah II Leadership Lecture. Uh, my name is Colin Wamurhertig and I'm the Dean of the Harris School of Public Policy Studies here at the University. The King Abdullah Leadership Lecture brings to the University uh, current and former world leaders uh, to share their insights and wisdom on world affairs and to bring us up to date on thinking in important and sometimes unstable parts of the world. Uh, these activities greatly enrich our intellectual life here at the university and as uh, Dominic Washington mentioned, after the formal remarks we will have a question and answer session uh, which the foreign minister has kindly agreed to submit himself to while recognizing that the university prides itself on being difficult in addressing questions to distinguished speakers. Now, many of you will have noticed, in fact, I'm sure all of you will have noticed over the past few days a, a great deal of uh, international activity here in the city of Chicago. Uh, and this event really caps for us this whole series of activities uh, in the city and the university. Uh, and a manifestation of this is in our first activity this afternoon, which precedes the lecture itself, in which we will sign an agreement between the University of Chicago and the government of the Republic of Turkey that will promote research and educational exchanges between the two. This, I think, will be the foundation for an increase in our engagement with Turkey. We feel, as, as most people recognize, that Turkey plays a crucial role in the future of world peace, both uh, to the West in Europe and to the South and East in Asia. And we're delighted to be able to collaborate with the government of Turkey in forwarding both our enthusiasm for engagement across the world and also their enthusiasm for exchanging with us uh, researchers and students who will come here to visit at the University of Chicago. Uh, I would now like, as part of this initial activity, to invite uh, Turkish Foreign Minister Dr. Ahmed Davutoglu, uh, Turkish Consul General Fatih Yildiz, uh, Harris School Deans International Council members Dr. Tony Goryeb and Mr. Mehmet Chilabi, David Green, Executive Vice President uh, of the University of Chicago, and Mr. Khan to join me here for the signing of the Memorandum of Understanding between our two institutions. And now to introduce Dr. Ahmed Davitoglu, I would like to welcome Mr. Mehmet Chelebi, uh, who is a member of the Harris School Deans International Council, uh, to introduce the minister. Mehmet is a businessman, uh, a member of the DIC, uh, and has been working tirelessly, not only on behalf of the school, but also in many venues and in many ways to foster understanding among uh, different ethnic groups uh, across the United States and across the world. In particular, he has been involved in the US with activities involving the Greek, Armenian, Jewish, and Arab communities, four communities who are not always known uh, for the best of relationships among themselves. And one of Mehmed's efforts is involved in improving this situation insofar as possible. 
and he's recently been appointed a goodwill ambassador for the United Nations to the Asuni ITT initiative in Amazonian Ecuador. We are grateful for Mehmed's work on behalf of the school, and I would now like to ask him to introduce our distinguished guest. Thank you. His Excellency Dr. Ahmed Davutoglu, Foreign Minister of Turkey, Dean Kolm Omuhurteg, I got it. He pronounced my <laughs> Dean of the Harris School of Public Policy at the University of Chicago, distinguished guests, faculty, and students. Multilateral foreign policy, zero problems with neighbors, rhythmic dip diplomacy, engagement of relations based on freedom and trust, new diplomatic approach, maximum cooperation, full integration. These are just a few foreign policy approaches our keynote speaker has introduced to not only Turkey, but dozens of countries in, in the territory spanning across emerging Europe, the Middle East, North Africa, and, and beyond. His Excellency Dr. Ahmed Davutoglu, the academic turned diplomat and inspirational community leader, an influential thinker and a politician, has worked persistently to build Turkey into a regional powerhouse. Turkey's external outlook has been unmistakably the design of Dr. Ahmed Davutoglu, known for a tireless work ethic which I have witnessed over the last several years. Dr. Davutoglu has embraced Turkey's newfound position as a bridge between rivals. Dr. Ahmed, Ahmed Davutoglu, or uh, Ahmed Hoca as many of us call him, meaning the professor, his visionary policy of zero problems with neighbor has been unanimously welcomed by all political parties in Turkey, including the opposition parties. With the crisis of the Arab Spring, his vision came to a pass as Turkey achieved a level of influence in the Middle East it, hasn't, it hadn't seen since the Ottoman Empire. Turkey is arguably one of the a few unequivocal winners in the region's turmoil so far, after conscientiously opting to side with the Arab peoples in their struggle and revolt against autocratic regimes, something I have personally experienced firsthand in my frequent visits to the Middle East, where thanks to his policies, Turkey is viewed overwhelmingly positively and as an inspiration to tens of millions of Arabs, especially the youth. No matter what Arab country you go to, when people learn I am Turkish, they immediately start talking about the latest Turkish soap operas, what we call uh, soft power, their, admira their admiration for Turkish leaders and Turkey's regional policies, its economy, as well as their hope their country would one day become like Turkey. The following quote from Dr. Davutoglu helps us clearly understand his dynamic approach in foreign policy. Last year, he was quoted regarding a discussion he had with EU members, foreign, foreign ministers in Finland, discussing the future of Europe. He said, they asked me the following question. How come Turkey is able to conduct active foreign policy while EU countries are trailing behind following in its footsteps? I said, if there's a crisis in X country, I can come to a decision in 30 minutes. Validating my decision takes another 30 minutes. And since the airplane is waiting at the airport, I can go to that country and within three hours can implement my decision. As for EU, the same decision would need to be discussed among the 27 EU member countries and will likely come up with various decisions, some contradicting each other. In order not to agitate any member state, they will come to a decision to not come to any decision. This process will take about a week during which another crisis will arise. Actors who can adjust to history's accelerating speed will be those who can institutionalize and take sequential decisions. Professor Davutoglu was born on February 26, 1959 in Konya, Turkey. In 1983, he graduated from the Vassar's University with a double major in political science and economics at the Faculty of Economics and Administrative Sciences. In 1990, he became an ass assistant professor at the Isl International Islamic University in Malaysia. In 1993, he became an associate professor, and between 1995 and 99, he worked at Marmara University. He worked at Bekent University in Istanbul as a professor from 95 to 2004. Professor Davutoglu published several books and articles on foreign policy in Turkish and English. His books and articles have also been translated into several languages, including Japanese, Portuguese, Russian, Arabic, Persian, and Albanian. On May, on May 1st, 2009, luckily for those of us who are huge fans of his thinking and vision, he was appointed as the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the 60th Government of the Republic of Turkey. Thanks to Ahmet Hoca's active diplomacy, former US, former U.S. Secretary of State Henry Kissinger, even years after his retirement, has had a resurgence of popularity. In fact, these days, Henry Kissinger is often called the Ahmet Davutoglu of America. 
Foreign Minister Davutola was recently recognized in Time Magazine's 2012 100 list, and prior to that as the Foreign Policy Magazine's top 100 global thinkers. It is my distinct and profound, uh, profound pleasure to introduce to you my mentor, someone I have a profound admiration for, who always gives me inspiration, whose modest and genteel approach puts any person he's negotiating with, with at, at ease, our, own, our very own Ahmed Oja, Turkey's Foreign Minister, Dr. Ahmed Davutoğlu. Thank you very much, my dear friend, Mehmet Bey. Dean, uh, dear Dean, Mr. Kolm, Omir Hertak, right? Dear members of Harris School, dear students, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, let me thank the uh, University of Chicago and Harris School for inviting me to this uh, extraordinarily important event and to share my views with you Really, it is special for me for several reasons. To be here, to be in Chicago, as an academician and as a Minister of Foreign Affairs. First, being an academician to, be in, at, uh, to give a lecture uh, at University of Chicago is special because University of Chicago is well known with the academic success. As an academician, if I had chance, in the future I don't know whether I will be having a chance, I would prefer to be at this high esteemed uh, academic institute, to be part of this great legacy, which had 87 Nobel Prize winner, starting with Albert Michelson in 1907, high, uh, the discovery of uh, speed of light, from that time as the first Nobel Prize winner in American history, until today, uh, Milton Friedman, Willard Levy, many of Nobel Prize winners from the, uh, this uh, academic institution. And of course, I should not forget President Obama, who was a senior lecturer at the uh, Faculty of Laws at uh, University of Chicago, and he is also one of the Nobel Prize, Peace Prize winners. I think the motto of this university is, speaks for itself. Cresca scientia vita exculator. Let knowledge increase so that life might be enriched. This is, this is so important uh, motto for me because life and knowledge, knowledge and life, or theory and practice. I was prepared myself from primary school until 2002, always on the side of knowledge. I planned my wife, uh, my life, not my wife, <laughs> <laughs> she planned everything, not I. <laughs> she planned everything, fortunately, so that I can function as a Minister of Foreign Affairs. I planned my life uh, to be on the knowledge side. Of course, you cannot separate knowledge and life. But I was thinking that I would be writing several books, articles, uh, and of course students. Therefore in uh, Turkish when Mehmet Bey said hoca, hoca means in Turkish scholar, master, mentor, whatever you say. It is such an important title for me. It was interesting uh, when I became minister, before I became minister, when I was chief advisor of prime minister, since I was still between theory and practice, somewhere in between, not politician at that time, and between knowledge and life, everybody was calling me hoca means my professor, my mentor. After I became minister, in, the, in my ministry, those ambassadors who were calling me hoca, hocam, they continue to say hocam. Uh, and whenever they say hocam because of their habit, they were apologizing. Oh, sorry, Mr. Minister, I have to say, Mr. Minister, I said, if you next time apologize because of calling me hoca, I will punish you because being an academician, being a hoja, is permanent. Being a minister is temporary. You can be a minister only for a while, but once you became hoja or mentor, you are hoja forever. Therefore, here I am sharing my views with you as an academician, as someone, uh, a student and a hoja at the same time uh, in this 
esteemed institution, not just as a minister. Therefore, it is great pleasure for me to be in this academic atmosphere to discuss knowledge. Of course, there is a life side or theory and practice. Uh, secondly, it is meaningful to be in Chicago, not only because of academic background, to understand the flow of history and to understand the global society. I think I am, I taught not only history or international relations, but I taught also history of cities. Every city makes me a reflection, an inspiration. Uh, of course, history of Chicago, uh, Chicago as a city is not an, as old as Istanbul or Rome or uh, Vienna or Marrakesh or Cairo or, or Jerusalem. A new city. But in this new city, comparatively, a, a tradition of global society is surviving. It is so interesting. In New York, of course, we know a huge, big, very big city, uh, United Nations is there. But a small United Nations is living in Chicago. That's what I observed whenever I came to Chicago. It was also interesting when we had ministers of foreign affairs meetings uh, hosted by uh, my dear colleague Hillary Clinton a few days ago. Many of our colleagues in their tanks, they said, today I met my citizens, my diaspora in Chicago. Lithuanian, Lettonian, Estonian, all. They said they had a diaspora in Chicago. It means there is a global society living in Chicago. It means those who want to understand global flow or global mechanism of uh, change, uh, they should understand the spirit of Chicago. And President Obama, uh, whom I always admire, uh, is, uh, I think, reflects in his foreign policy this multicultural character as well. It was interesting, maybe I will just share this, and that's important. Maybe I, I, maybe I will share in my theoretical analysis uh, that part. Uh, but this spirit of Chicago is important for coexistence, for living together, for the future of, the, of a much more inclusive global society. Now, when, we, when I talk on practic, uh, practice, let me, what, since I will be giving some details about Turkish foreign policy, let me share my last program uh, in the last few days. Then you can understand Chicago as well as Turkish foreign policy. You may now think, what is the relation? Before coming here, I was in Greek Orthodox Church where the bishop was, who, uh, was someone who migrated from Izmir to Chicago. From here, on the way to airport, I will be visiting Assyrian Orthodox Church, again having origins from Anatolia. Yesterday, the day before yesterday, I met with uh, uh, representative of American Syrian community who, tried to, who wanted to discuss with me about the future of Syria. There's a Syrian, I was positively surprised seeing such a dynamic Syrian community living in uh, Chicago. Meanwhile, together with President Gül, my president, we met with the representatives of Muslim community. Some were from Palestine, some were from Morocco, some were from Indonesia, uh, Pakistan, India, a group of people from different corners of the world, and we met the diaspora of Somalia. Somalia, leaders of Somalia. You know, again, I will refer to our foreign, in our foreign policy how we approach to certain issues, especially the uh, global consciousness of humanity today is in Somalia. And in our foreign policy, Somalia has a special place. Uh, no problem, you can <laughs> Don't hurry. <laughs> no problem. Uh, so uh, you can uh, understand the uh, weakness or the, the challenges of global society regarding the issues like in Somalia. We met with Somalian leaders. 
And they told us that they see Turkey as their homeland because of recent Turkish foreign policy vis-a-vis -vis Somalia. Uh, Prime Minister Erdogan visited Somalia with a delegation of 200 leading intellectual businessmen. And uh, now in Somalia, there is only one full-fledged functioning embassy. It is Turkish embassy. There is only one regular flight to Mogadishu after 20 years. It is Turkish Airlines from Istanbul to some Mogadishu. And all Turkish NGOs are doing the, uh, working there. We restored many hospitals in Somalia. In the last six, seven months, we spent around uh, 300 million US dollars reserved for Somalia and spent some of these. And they came and they said, since they don't have any embassy in uh, Washington, they see Turkish embassy as their embassy and they see our consul general as their consul general in Chicago. So you can see this range of uh, scope of the interest of Turkey. Sometimes because of humanitarian aspects, sometimes because of our historical background. Of course, I forgot to say, I also got uh, uh, a, an award of Macedonian Friendship Award by Macedonian community led by President of Macedonia in the evening. I, uh, and I met with the uh, diaspora of Balkan countries, Macedonia, Albanian, Bosnia, Herzegovina. So from Macedonia to Somalia, from Bosnia, Herzegovina to uh, Far East, uh, everywhere, or Syria, there is a Turkish interest and Turkish vision.